Hi, my name is Karen Holmes. I'm the founder and director of the World Peace Organization for the One World Government. Uh, today I'm going to talk about something that is, is horrific, and I've talked about this before. It, that is, uh, one of the main crises in the family aspect of it. World peace is divided up into uh, the different segments, and one of them is, is crisis in the family. When you come up with a plan, there has to be a rationale for, a, for it. Otherwise, why make any changes? Um, there has to be a reason to, for legislation, for example, in our government, in any government, there has to be a reason for a plan. And so, crisis in the family opposes the idea of the plan. Uh, if you look at the planning circle, if you look at the plan as, at the top, at the bottom of it is crisis in the family. So. So world peace is starts out with this idea. Any project, any plan starts out with a rationale. And it has to address the, the crisis in the family. It has to address the root cause of the problem or it makes it worse. Our organization is about to start out with the idea of the... See, I'm the, I'm the director, the, the principal and director of the organization, but I, I cannot do everything by myself, so it's up to me to turn over the, the project ideas. I just have ideas and, and, and I'm opening them up for debate. But now what has to happen is the planning board has to come together and to start, the, the board is going to start to address uh, the root cause of the problems and go through the planning and making sure that all of our projects and the plans that people come up with address the root cause of the problem. So my, <clears throat> the reason I'm talking about this now is because my, my first, I'm responsible for the first government proposal and that is the exit strategy for Iraq. I'm advocating for that because of a character defamation campaign against me. When I came up, I'm sure that you've seen thousands of movies where um, somebody comes up with a new idea and then all of a sudden there's this big, huge wave of, of a, let's say, oppressive actions against that person. And the reason is, is because the existing structure doesn't like to see change. They're dependent on the existing structure. Uh, it... It's, it's a very difficult situation to come up with a plan because the first step is being hit by a tsunami of, of people who are trying to stop it from happening. It happens all the time as part of the planning process. So your plan for it to go forward has to be thought out on the first on the mental level and then on the physical. But what about if you come up with a plan that doesn't it's like a crisis in the family, but it's your family, and and you come up with a plot instead. So this is kind of where we are now in our organization, is the idea of spinning off. I'm, I'm, I'm basically here, I introduced this idea of the plan for world peace, got hit by the tsunami of oppression, and then... Now it has to be other people who are standing up and doing their part and coming the next one is actually the where world peace starts. Okay, when when somebody stands up. Now I'm I'm the head of a nonprofit organization and I stood up to defend Saddam Hussein. I'm parallel to John Adams and I'm parallel to members the events that I am happening in my life. I'm parallel to John Adams. So let's say that John Adams, you may not. He was the second president of the United States. Um, had had absolutely. Uh, he was a small town attorney, and he basically uh, stood up to defend the the British soldiers after the Boston massacre. He 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 said that was the most difficult thing he'd ever done in his life, uh, was to stand up and defend the the British soldiers after the Boston massacres. He wasn't sure how many people were going to be mad at him forever. 
And he that's why it was so difficult for him to do that. So if I am standing up and saying that the I'm standing up to defend Saddam Hussein, there was an 87 or something like that, a, over 80% approval rating for the, the preemptive strike on Iraq when George W. Bush invaded Iraq. So how many people are would be angry with me for standing up and defending the Iraqi people? So it has to be that I am standing up on the crisis in the family. I have a plan, and I'm going to explain to you why revenge today doesn't work. Why it doesn't work. The reason I'm doing it today is is because of a video that I saw that Chris Alyssa did um, from CNN News. He does the he comes up and the point is he comes up with the point videos and he says that's the point and he explains where it comes from but he just his video uh started out with roger ailes and fox news and then he started to bring in um people the how fox news played an important role in 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 some of these problems now i wanted so i wanted to look at Roger Ailes and um, what happened with Fox News and all of this voter suppression, um, the people who are are storming the Capitol, um, Trump supporters, what happened? Why did that happen? So why does revenge not work? Why are these people, why did Roger Ailes die? What happened with Matt Gates, for example, Donald Trump. Where did all of this stuff? Why are they facing so much of a backlash now? And also, how does this affect the Iraq War? Okay, so we're looking now at events that are happening. The Iraq War is something that, for many people, the younger people, it's 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 18 years ago, fading off into history. Why is that? Why? You know, it's over. Get over it. Isn't that the attitude that a lot of people have? We can't get over it because the game of revenge is something that people have been playing for a long time. That the God in the Bible says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Nobody has the right to get revenge on anybody. And the reason for that is, is because they're based on, revenge is based on five power games that are seven deadly sins. People die. And in heaven, people don't die. Uh, world peace is basically creating heaven on earth, and people don't die in heaven. So they, they go on and create their life, and they live to be like 800 years old, like the people of the Bible, the patriarchs and the matriarchs of the Bible live to be 800 years. They did that not because time was different in those days. It was because they knew how to live their lives. They were taught that revenge doesn't work. Even though they lived during the Old Testament times, they, they didn't get revenge. They stood on the principles that you have the right to create your life. Uh, we just experienced um, the Passover and we're, and period, and um, that it was the point where where Moses led the the slaves that had been enslaved by Egypt to build the the big pyramids. He led them to freedom. Okay, so how so that is not getting revenge. That is standing on the principles of 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 um, spirituality and and how revenge he didn't get revenge on the pharaoh he stood on the principles that people have the right to create their own life okay he saw through the illusion of slavery and that's kind of what i wanted to talk about today roger ailes owned was a man who who owned a very wealthy man who owned who owned Fox News. Now, I know nothing about Roger Ailes other than he 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 died and he he basically owned Fox News and he basically um, according to Chris Alyssa pulled Fox News off course of being a 
a news organization, and uh, that was reporting the news and journalism. And he beca- he pulled it off, and it became something where he was um, like getting revenge. Okay, on the Clintons, the Bidens, the the um, Obama, and George Soros. Okay, so now what we're doing now is we're looking at this is we're not looking at the people. We're using them as archetypes. I'm not going to accuse anybody of anything. This is not an accusation. This is an observation that I'm making based on what Chris Alyssa said. Okay, his report. Okay, now, what happens with revenge is and why it doesn't work. Roger Ailes died. Okay, in a previous video, I said George Herbert Walker Bush died. Now, why did they die? Why did they die? Because they played the game of pride. Now, this happens over and over and over again. So what I'd like you to do, if you're watching this, is to start watching for revenge. Start wa- looking for this pentacle of power that I'm going to talk about. And then start to see what causes this, what caused George Soros to die. Okay, he died in 2017, about the same time, I think that's about the same time that George Herbert Walker Bush died. Okay, now, what happens? I'm going to use my trusty old diagram here. Um, what happens is, revenge is like, like people who, who are each playing power games, and one triggers the other one to come in. So, let's say George... Um, not George Soros, um, Roger Ailes with Fox News played the game of pride. He was playing the game of pride. He put people down. Okay, so then what happens at that point in time was that he did that for respect. It, it's it's kind of like they people play the game of revenge, like a hostile takeover of, of another country. We're seeing this with, let's say, Russia. How about how about how about the uh, this is what caused Stonehenge to fall apart? Okay, to be a hostile takeover of England. These are all there. There's even the hostile takeover of the planet and the war in heaven. So we're looking at which was not basically what it seemed. Okay, so what we're doing is we're looking at this idea of of why people get revenge on other people and why it doesn't work. And this is something that is in the, the um, my power series books. People think that revenge is a power game, but it demonstrates lack of power. This is happening in my organization too. Is that this tsunami of, of oppression trying to stop me from the hostile takeover of my organization and the, the total, total oppressive actions of a group of people, this is what stops it from happening. Is because, because Roger Ailes died. Okay, now think about that. If he's, if he's a man of pride, he plays the game of pride, he puts people down. What happens is he's getting revenge on somebody. That's what our Pentagon, if you take these points off, you have a Pentagon. That's why our government's building headquarters of national defense is shaped like a Pentagon, is because it's based on these five power games. So we have to start looking at defense from a very different perspective because revenge doesn't work. This is, this is a matter of national defense that I'm talking about, okay? We're relying on something that doesn't work for our national defense. Okay, so I'm telling you, this is a crisis in the family situation, okay? And also a matter of national security. Okay, so pride. Pride, if people who play the game of pride want respect. They think that they can get respect by putting somebody down. They do it because they want a combination of, on the other side, it's like a goal that, that's a, a means to an end. 
Envy is the game where they judge some people judge someone. So if you take five groups of people or groups of people and put it around here, in in a like a round building, what happens is and there's a light shining here. The light reaches this far. This is where uh, the revenge is, and then their goal is right over here. But there isn't anybody on the other side of the circle. There, it's like nobody's in agreement for that person to get get their their goal. So now I'm going to like I'm going to explain to you. If they want this, you have to understand the power games. So then what happens is over here you have they want a combination of capacity, and they're doing it to have the combination of capacity and and a voice. So Roger Ailes is sitting there, Fox News capacity. So let's say that he wants to be able to have power. And and let's say he doesn't have any real journalistic he wants his his business to really expand and to grow and to make him make give him a voice. He's, he said he had no voice and he had no capacity. He, he created a, a journalistic pro, uh, business, a news organization that functioned outside of its capacity and he wanted a voice. He wanted capacity and a voice. And he thought by getting revenge on, on the Clintons, the Obamas, um, for Benghazi, that's what started it, the Clintons and Benghazi, um, and and he was going to get revenge, and Obama stood up and brought her in, uh, Hillary Clinton in, and then um, the Bidens with Joe Biden by getting revenge by by this spewing out of a vitriol, so to speak, against them all the time. He was basically kind of like weaving this this illusion. He he came into it. The only problem with it is there's nobody on the other side. A journalistic, a news organization is supposed to report the piece, um, not not do something that is um, character defamation in a way. So so let's say this. This is not character defamation, though. Basically, they, it was opinion, and because this was this is what he wanted was judgment. He wanted a combination of capacity. People who do this play the game lack capacity. And so they re admire other people for their capacity. So there it was. That is what basically killed him. Is because when he started to realize that, that by getting revenge, he was not a news organization. People questioned his capacity to be a journalist. And they also questioned his uh, capacity to have a voice. He couldn't, by getting revenge, he lost respect. He wanted respect. And his goal was to get respect by demonstrating capacity and his voice. It backfired on him. Okay, see what I mean? It's, it's like if you, if you do something in order to get respect, and people just start questioning you and saying, you know, I can't believe you would do something like this. You know, this doesn't make sense. You know, this you're being sued because of all this, this vendetta thing you got going on. He said, he said, you know, or whatever. You know, it doesn't work. So that what that does is that so you start out with revenge that brought in the people who judged him. Let's say people like. Um, um, uh, the the them so by getting revenge on the Clintons and the Bidens and the that that brought in the people who judged them, and that brought in the people who were going to take things from him. So let's say that you had this thing. How about greed? The people who were going to take money from them. How about people like um, Mitch McConnell or the people who from from the Republican Party who went on Fox News? You had Fox News the Rep. George, or Roger Ailes, the the news commentators, the people who went on there, like let's say Matt Gates, the people who were on there over and over and over again, who were tr trying to control 
the to Congress. Um, Matt Gates, for example, going on there so many times, controlling Congress, and and saying, well, we have all these people, Fox News, who are supporting us, and you know, Congress, you know, you you basically these are your constituents, okay? So now we're going to control that. Then what happened is that brought in people, not so much Matt Gates, but that brought in the people who were looking for money and control of money. And that brought in the people like Matt Gates, who basically, and Donald Trump, basically who've been accused of, of sexual uh, assaults. How about Bill O'Reilly was accused of that. Um, Donald Trump. He goes on there. What Donald Trump wants is revenge. He thinks revenge against Biden and and those people and the, their targets. He thought that he would get a voice and money. So Donald Trump, over all this time period, is getting revenge. He thinks every time he gets revenge, he's going to get a combination of a voice and money. He go, went out on his on his rallies and just slammed the Bidens and um, Hunter Biden and um, Hillary Clinton and and all those people. His his little his little dance during the debate um, when he was walking. Hillary Clinton was walking, talking, and he was standing and kind of walking around behind her, kind of like. I know something. I'm working behind your back, kind of thing. What happens is, what happens is, when Roger Ailes died, that people who denied people voice, let's say that voter suppression now, okay, they believe that they can get revenge. Voter suppression people deny other people a voice. They're getting revenge. They believe that by getting revenge on on the Democrats on Hillary Clinton and the Democratic targets that they are going to be able to maintain their power by denying people a voice in voter suppression. Okay? So, and they do that. People deny other people a voice because they fear, lack intimacy and they lack respect. They believe they, ha they are going to get respect and intimacy by denying other people voice. Okay, now who are they, if, if the, the people like, who are voting against, voting for all these voter suppression laws, they, they want, they, they want intimacy, and they, so they're, what are they going for? Are they going for, are they doing this because, because they don't care, they can, by, by putting the Democrats' votes down, the stopping Democratic voters, from, they will get elected, but they will also get the big donors to go for them. They have a, the, their big donors and the respect that they, they need to stay in office. So these are all power games that are totally oppressive to the people. Uh, the, Roger Ailes didn't have the right, basically, this wasn't going to get respect by by getting revenge on people, on the on the Hillary Clinton and Biden and Hunter Biden, and he di they didn't get respect. So that's what happens. Is this is now undermining the voter suppression people? Fox News. They let's say they they go on Fox News and they have their voice. They think they are going to get their voice by going on Fox News and getting revenge on. Okay, so let's let's just say let's rule out all these people, and let's let's just say all the black people are out, all the minorities are out. We're just going to have white voters, but we're just going to make sure those people can't vote. Does that actually something that a an elected official should be doing to stay in office? What happens if the Supreme Court declares that that's not legal to do that? Okay, so, oh, then basically you get the Supreme Court justices in, like, like Brett Kavanaugh, who's been accused of, of sexual assault. And then by getting revenge 
And you remember that one little point when he when he was in his confirmation hearing, so and he said, and he, and he just real fast ripped you know, said it real fast, that and the Clintons. Okay, why would the Clintons be important there? Because he was speaking to Congress. He was speaking to Lindsey Graham, who stood up to defend him at that point in time. So Lindsey Graham is voter suppression. Okay, so each of these people, are they're all getting revenge. And the same thing happened with with the Iraq War. You had George Herbert Walker Bush bring in his son, George W. Bush, played the game of envy. After all, this guy tried to kill my dad. He, he put his dad on a pedestal, and that allowed him to judge Saddam Hussein to be axis of evil, the judgment idea. And that brought in the coalition countries, and that brought in the countries like the people like... Um, President Saleh of Yemen, who played not so much this, but see, lust is not so much that sexual assault. It's also an idea of of weaving an illusion. These two, so we're looking at weaving an illusion. These two power games are based on illusion. When these games stop working, these games are still weaving their illusion. So what we're doing is we're seeing, we're seeing like Donald Trump, still maintain a very strong power base because they believe their illusion. So what this is something that we have to understand that the pentacle of power, Donald Trump cannot get his, what he wants is a voice and money. See, right now he's being undermined by those, by stealing money from, by um, having those recurring payments from his own people. Okay. So that's what it is, is that the interactions between the people who play these five games, they're undermining each other right now. Okay, it's basically something. You need to understand that God doesn't condone revenge. This is a, these are five power games, seven deadly sins, and people always die when people play the seven deadly sins. And Roger Ailes, the game of pride, is the first one to die. Because he believed that he couldn't, he believed that he could get revenge, but he couldn't get his life by getting revenge. He he had all the money in the world. He didn't. Money was not something that was important to him. What was important to him was capacity, and a voice, and he got it. Um, but he wasn't able to defend to demonstrate his capacity. He, the, the revenge got in the way of him doing that. Donald Trump. The revenge got in the way. He was able to bring in all those people, but he had to weave an illusion to do it. And those people are now in in crisis. So he's collapsing the Republican Party. He's but it was already filled with all those people who were playing power games, and they couldn't get their life. So now this is the end of the revenge. Not the end of the Republican Party if if it goes back to the old ideas, the tried and true ideas, the traditional ideas, but then working to solve problems, the crisis in the family problems. Okay, that's all I wanted to talk about today was why revenge doesn't work. And this Chris Alyssa story, I would say that that this is the point of his of his thing is is he talked about Roger Ailes, but but this is actually the true point of the story is true power doesn't come from revenge. And if this is the case, what about our national security? What about our national security if it's based on, how about sanctions? If it's based on war, genocide, massacres, um, slavery, and terrorism? How about if we stop playing the games because the games don't work? We cannot get respect by waging war when a plan for world peace has already been introduced. So let's just take that tsunami and turn it into just a little trickle, the plan against world, uh, the world peace. Let's turn it into a little trickle by undermining this. And let's just say that, that 
those people will become part of it too, part of the plan, when, when they realize that revenge doesn't work. Okay, I ask that you like, share, and subscribe. And I'm not very good at describing some of these things. Um, I'm These videos are meant to be just an idea, opening them up to debate. Um, my my books that I've channeled, Lady, I wrote, I'm a psychic, I'm a channel, and I channeled a book with Lady, a series of books with Lady Gaia about revenge, the Power Series books. Um, she came through and explained, uh, does it so much better than I do, because she carries the idea from how it works and why it doesn't, all the way to where true power comes from in the Power Series. The money that we get for the organization doesn't come from donations. We don't accept donations. We're going to be introducing these books, and you can find out more about this whole thing, how it works and where true power comes from by reading her books. She does so much better at it than I do. I'm, I'm just an average person who's been hit by a tsunami because of character defamation against me. That's why I buy my clothes at the thrift store, basically. Um, people have taken things from me and done things, and I'm watching the pentacle of power collapse against me now. So anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you today, is the books are better, um, revenge, why it doesn't work, and and watch now for this idea of revenge and people getting revenge on other people. I'm not, I don't get revenge on people. I don't get even... I, I just watch people, and I know that the principles associated with universal law and all this oppression. So this is the uh, one of the power power inventions, the free power source invention. And this is why I wrote my letter to the Supreme Court because and which can be found on the website, and because it stands on these seven principles, that here let me bring this up here to you and so you can see it a little bit better okay so if there's the the principle of equality okay equality ends the oppression of war so for conflict resolution the first requirement is that everybody has to be considered equal that's what helped to end the nuclear standoff when the olympics um, why North Korea joined the Olympics in uh, four years ago. Okay, so because they were considered equal to all the other countries. Now we're equal, unfortunately we're equal because everybody has, has been exposed to the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. So, so now that's all I wanted to say. Um, I, I ask that you like, share, and subscribe, but most of all, share, but j j not so much <clears throat> that you have to, if, if you know somebody who is basically, would like this information, then share and join the debate. Talk about it and debate it, and use this as the starting point, because you you have a right to have a voice in your government, and you have the right to have a voice in the creation of the international government, too. Your voice will be heard. It's, nothing is going forward until everybody has their voice. Everyone who wants something to say, we, it has to address all the different parts of this idea. So that's why it's taking so long to come. And the first stage step is revenge, where true power comes from. If the United States is doing that, hey, you know, not working. So, like, share, and subscribe.